Hello, and thank you for listening to Acting Related, the My Sighted Actor podcast. I'm Frank Prendergast, and today's episode is part one of a two-parter in which I chat with director Sean O'Connor. Sean's latest short has won four awards, including Best Irish Short at the Oscar Qualifying Foil Film Festival. He was recently nominated for a Discovery Award at the Dublin International Film Festival, and he's directed numerous shorts, a feature, and he recently directed a stage play as well. Some of the things I'll be chatting with Sean about include the impact coronavirus has had on his creativity and productivity, how his first IMDb credit is a feature film he made for about €300, Euro, and how taking an acting class changed his approach to directing. In uh, part two, we'll be talking about more, but for now, let's chat. Sean, thank you very much for agreeing to be the first ever guest on the very brand new My Sight That Actor podcast. Thanks, Frank. I'm uh, I'm honoured. Um, so I thought we would just kick things off with, um, I don't want to talk endlessly about coronavirus because that's what everyone is talking endlessly about right now but at the same time it'd be kind of weird to ignore it I think and uh, we are at the time of chatting in the whole stay at home phase of it Um, so I just thought we'd just really maybe quickly have a chat about like I know there's a lot of discussion and I think it's especially I think it's I think it's even more so for creative people where people are putting a lot of pressure on themselves to write their next amazing script or book or whatever whatever field they're in versus and then there's that there's just that balance of like also just taking care of ourselves yeah and I was just kind of wondering maybe where you fell in that range absolutely yeah I mean there's um I think people kind of people in the creative sphere especially have kind of felt this pressure to like you know I mean so by basically by the time this this is all finished you would but you'd better have written the great Gatsby like yeah. You know, or or don't or, or or don't talk to me. Do you know what I mean? Like you've had yeah. you've had two months. Like, yeah. what have you been doing? Um, and I initially when when the ha- when the the shutdown was ha- um was announced, I I did have this thing of like, okay, well, this will actually be a great opportunity to to get work done, and in a way it has. But like, um. I think, and especially from kind of like seeing stuff on social media, actually less so social media, but but actually speaking to people working in the creative sphere, I found that um, while there are obvious benefits to having that time and space to to sit down and create, um, it's not, it's not, you're not working from home, right? You are staying at home because of a government mandated shutdown in a global pandemic yeah and you're trying to get work done there yeah and there are and there is so much like psychological weight that comes with that um not to mention just the i mean the the stress of it the stress of reading the news the the the, the stress of um i mean you know not being able to 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 see your loved ones to to um like if you like you know parents or grandparents worrying about the worrying about their health these are all things that are kind of compounded on top of it, but you have to kind of compartmentalize in order to get work done. And I think that like in the first, after the first two or three weeks, I was thinking like, I'm not getting nearly as much work done. I, I'm probably getting less work done than I do normally when I work. For yeah. Them. Why is yeah. that? And, and it was only kind of through speaking to other people, other creative um, folks and feeding that out and kind of seeing that most people were having that same experience. And I felt, um, I guess kind of, less guilty about it um and also uh, uh, yeah this this is another thing i think is extremely important the whole thing of like going out and dancing and drinking and hanging out with your friends and like going and th- these things that we often may consider to be j- just even socializing going for a coffee like you know yeah things that we may in better circumstances consider to be kind of frivolous activities they are actually extremely important and cathartic and cathartic and they give you the release that allows you to kind of like build up to that momentum of work for Monday morning again. Yeah. And, and when you don't have that, you're losing the, 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 the structure. Yeah. Of, yeah. So I mean, I, I guess kind of I like the, the, the I had, I had, had a few like, you know, jobs 
um, the the shooting part of the jobs done before right when this happened. Uh, one was um, a, a music video for a, a, a friend of mine, um, and it's a, a it's it's a music video that involves um, well she, she she gave me the song, and it's about a breakup. But I also felt it could be kind of uh, it also could be about like you know the grief or kind of losing a loved one. And right. um, I had this idea of like, um, uh, so my my grandfather on my father's side passed away a few years ago, and he and my uh, my grandmother were like very much in love until the until uh, until he passed away, and um, uh, so she's living on her own now. And I thought it might be a really nice kind of tribute to him and to their relationship to to um, make a music video that was kind of that like um, combined old kind of footage of them um and because they were like there's loads of like old footage and kind of old photographs of them kind of um you know their wedding and kind of when they when they met and all that um and then combine that with footage of her on her own now but surrounded by the memories of him so kind of like a cross between beautiful um, the video for hurt by johnny cash and the first five minutes of the film up um the, the music video sounds beautiful mm. yeah, yeah. I'm, Excited about it, yeah. Um, any idea of when that will make it out into the world? Um, so interestingly, the the, uh, the singer songwriter for for whom it was made, um, uh, her name is Ellie O'Keefe. I've known her for years, and uh, she we, we ran in the same musical circles years ago, back when I was a full time musician. And uh, she uh, she's from Ratmore and Kerry, and she um, <laughs> she has been on the uh, the Voice UK. So, anyways, long answer short, um, we are waiting to see what happens with the uh, with the voice, and um, because sure. she, I think she has there's there, there's contracts and stuff involved with what she can release while she's under the the tenure of the program. Gotcha. Um, so right. yeah, but fingers crossed, it'll be it'll be soon. Brilliant, excellent, yeah. excellent. So um, yeah, we knew each other for I think a couple of years before I realized that you were the director of Steaming and Dreaming. The, the Grandmaster Cash story, but also like really interesting that you have a feature under your belt. Uh, and according to IMDb, it's like your first credit is like, was it your first credit? Yeah, it was. It was indeed. Um, so like I was I'm saying a minute ago, I was um, I was a full time musician until kind of pretty much since I was 30. But uh, uh, the multimedia in the Cork Institute of Technology, that was my degree. And then I went on to do a master's degree in film studies in University College Cork. Um, and it was kind of after that that I decided, OK, I have to make something. If I don't attempt this, I, um, I'll never know. And also, I kind of felt that, like, I was kind of drifting away from the kind of, like, the opportunity of potentially making something. So um, with the help of... Uh, um, some friends I met um, during the um, the the, uh, the master's degree, and um, so I just went off and bought a super cheap camera and a little Sony Handycam, bought a little microphone for it, and we just started making sketches. Um, for uh, I don't even know did Facebook exist at the time, but like it was for pretty much for like YouTube and social media and such, um, and they involved um, these little sketches about uh, a cork rapper, um, who we kind of. The character of which we kind of built from scratch. It was a bit based on a, based on a few different actual rappers, but um, and this cork rapper who was kind of like strugg- struggling in his art, but he had tried to branch off into these different things like film reviews, like and uh, like audiobooks, like children's audiobooks and stuff like that. Um, just different scenarios for him, like yeah. Um, but we also recorded actual songs, like so we like sat down and kind of like did our hip hop research and started recording these tunes and had actually great crack making them. But then we yeah. kind of found that like, people were suspecting that like th- this guy was real and were actually interacting with him as a real person <laughs> online. So we're going, oh my goodness. And then uh, then this other character kind of came to came into fruition through um, uh, uh, another mutual friend of ours, um, a rival rapper, um, Grandmaster Cash and Dr. Fiekenstein from Caragalay and Rochestown and having like, you know, gang wars. And uh, after shooting loads of stuff with them, loads of scenes and stuff, we kind of found that like there was this like natural kind of arc happening um uh just between like where the rappers had come from and kind of things they had in common with things they were fighting about so we said look we've got all this stuff shot um why don't we actually write some scenes and put them together and 
see if we can make a story out of it. Like, because all we, all we have to do is hit the 90 minute mark, you know? So we did that. And over the course of um, nine months, we basically just kind of uh, put the whole story together, uh, improvised loads of it. I mean, the lads, Con, Con, Con Doyle um, and uh, uh, Connor and Joe were absolutely like just I mean, brilliant, brilliant writers and improvisers and musicians. And we ended up with a feature film at the end of it um, that we made for literally like 300 euros or something in total. Like, and uh, That's amazing. It's ridiculous. Like it's ab- like the further away I get from it, I'm just like, that's ridiculous. It's amazing. And, and like Cork, I don't, I don't know how wide it went, but I certainly remember at the time, like Cork was buzzing about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was the, well, the final scene of the film involves um, the, the lads having a, not a rap battle, but a kind of a, a gig together. And it was in the Krushkin lawn. Is it Krushkin lawn? Yeah, it was. I was confused when there's Krushkin on the spot being fun. No, it's the Krushkin. Um, and we put out a call on social media for people to come up to, to show up for the thing. And it was like Sunday afternoon. And we packed the place out. It was ridiculous. Like we were, and there was like people kind of chanting the names out in the streets and everything. So it was very kind of fortuitous. Like this kind of social media thing we built up in the meantime had actually kind of taken off. Like, and then people showed up for that final scene. When we had, when we got, when we got Tommy Tiernan involved with the, um, um, to kind of set up that final scene with this, this interview where he talks about Grandmaster Cash's music. And, um, and then we sent it into the Cork Film Festival and like, not for a minute did I think it would, it would, they would even look at it like, you know, right. because I, I had no idea what happened at film festivals, but they certainly didn't show these types of films. And then it got in and uh, we had a gala screening at it, um, which sold out. Uh, and Stevie G was playing afterwards. It was great. It was great fun, but that sold out. So they put on a second night of it and that sold out. Um, and those, those two nights were, I'm like, to be quite honest, like the film didn't really kind of carry outside Cork. I mean, I, I, I also at the time we, like we had no idea how to promote it or kind of like, even like so many other festivals would have been kind of outside of my can at the time, but um, sure. uh, but just that experience of kind of like you know being in a room with something that you made screening and people reacting to it was just like I was like, yeah. okay, I need to I need to stick with this and see if I can make a career out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Um, and yeah, so you have you've made um, well you've you've made a bunch of shorts. You've had um a, a serialized piece on tv um we've worked on two shorts together mm-hmm. uh which is that that is how i know you i think i don't think i knew you before we we, we made that um before we made rest my bones no i don't believe um, so I, I think i i i had known you through uh, mark hogan's work gotcha uh, in particular yeah i'd probably seen you in, in a few things but like um uh i had definitely seen um uh because Mark made that, that trilogy of films, yeah, and I, I and I'd, I kind of saw each of them as they as they came out or as they were released online, and um, I knew you from that and uh, had uh, had admired you from afar, <laughs> and <laughs> and I unknowingly had been admiring your work, but didn't figure it out for like several years. <laughs> um, but yeah, so and rest my bones, like so the the two I've worked with you on are rest my bones and disappear, and both were. Uh, like rest my bones was a very technically challenging piece. I would imagine it seemed like say it seemed quite like a fair, quite a, an ambitious uh, script to take on. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, I mean, it was it was definitely a, a big jump in terms of technical things. Um, technical things. Um, but it was definitely the big. It was the because like with the so with the, the grandmaster casting, like I had been like just shooting every like doing all the technical work myself, like there was literally not another person there. There was no <laughs> light, there was no anything. So kind of, and then I, I made a, a good few music videos where I got to work with small crews, which was a great opportunity and great learning. And then we got the money to make, we got a small grant to make um, Rest My Bones. And then I actually had like um, a, 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 a fantastic director of photography, um, uh, uh, Justin McCarthy, um, who very unfortunately is no, no longer with us. But, um, yeah. And uh an amazing crew and actually had someone to uh, do a score for us. And, um, uh, uh, it was a completely different experience, you know, but really, really good and kind of what I needed to do at the time. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was kind of great to get something with a crew on them. But this is the thing, like, I mean, at the, 
I, I had always, I even felt at that time, like, I mean, and it's, it's true, like, I was probably the person on the set with, like, the least amount of experience, <laughs> you know, and I'm telling, like, and people are asking me questions about, like, light temperatures and stuff, I'm just like, it's just, just whatever you think yourself, I suppose, <laughs> you know, um, but, but I think there's, a, but there's, like, uh, there's, it's important to do that as well, to kind of be able to, you know, like, um, make the decisions that you, uh, that you know are kind of creatively correct for it, but then like being totally happy to kind of relinquish like um, technical decisions to people who are very good at what they do. Like, like, sure. uh, like Justin or uh, uh, Rupert who is, who was gaffing on it. Like, or <clears throat> yeah. Cause I mean, well, Justin certainly was always just such a lovely presence on set. And I would imagine he would be the ideal. He would have been the, he's the ideal person to kind of guide you through something in a very, like he's not the type of person to like take control, um, but also a very generous DOP, I would imagine, certainly from an actor's perspective. Absolutely. He, he was and just, so and, and he was the DOP on Disappear as well. And I just, I, yeah, always assumed that I would, uh, that I would get to work with him further. And uh, yeah, unfortunately not. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's such a lovely presence on set. Uh, just such a lovely man. Yeah. Yeah. An absolute joy to be around. And yeah and crazy crazy talented as well yeah 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 so disappear because rest my bones was kind of i mean uh it's it's a lovely film but also very technically like it has a lot of special effects and uh, a lot of different locations and it has a guy with no head like yeah <laughs> with no head strolling around the final scene like spoiler <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. if you haven't seen it by now like uh, <clears throat> uh, and then disappear uh was very well, I found it very challenging, um, uh, but for completely different reasons, uh, it was, I suppose, more dramatically challenging because it was almost the opposite. It's two people, one location, pretty much. Um, and it's it's all kind of it's it's entirely in the intensity of the moment. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I mean, and uh, like Justin was amazing in those terms as well, because because um, it was written as a radio play. Which myself and uh, Connor Barron, who did the music for Rest My Bones, um, uh, put together, and then it was just kind of itching at me that it could be, it could work as a as a as a film piece as well. And also, I like Rest My Bones was the first one I, I'd written, but I kind of I I really wanted to kind of try something dramatic as well. I mean, not that Rest My Bones is dramatic, but something that's kind of strictly drama, um, and. Um, and also to kind of work within those parameters of like, you know, because we had no, we had like very, very little money for it. Um, there's one location, there's two actors, um, small crew. What what can you do with it? Like, you know, and I, lo- I love that, that that challenge. Like, and especially of kind of taking some, I love that thing of taking an idea that's like high concept and it kind of opens with that. Like he says, like, okay, I think we're going to just disappear and kind of just, okay, how do, and how do you kind of dig into that? Like, you know, within the sure. parameters that you have. But um but Justin was amazing in terms of like, you know, like breaking up the the look of it into different sections, like and having those push ins on your face and on George's face. Like and um but uh but yeah, I'm, I'm just like so happy with it, proud of it at, at the end. And I mean, like, you know, you're you guys are fantastic in it. Like, how was it for sure. you? In, I mean, I know it's it's a it, in terms of in actorial terms, it's completely different from I mean, I guess it's completely different from something like Rest My Bones, but um but in preparation, yeah, I mean, had you had you started working with uh, with Tom Kibbe in the meantime? Yes, you have. yeah, and uh, yeah, and I'm I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to I wanted to get onto that as well mm-hmm. because um, you wouldn't have known Tom Kibbe then, I guess. No, um, but both myself and George were attending his classes, and so I so Tom Kibbe is um, a a um, acting coach uh, based in Cork, uh, who. He himself studied with Meisner, Adler and Strasberg, uh, and he has uh, he teaches techniques to techniques of modern realist acting. Um, And so uh, so I was definitely using his technique to prepare. And but I mean, that was it was it was really challenging script wise in terms of like, yeah, um, I suppose, yeah, in terms of knowing knowing where to pitch that and how to get the intensity across, but but also not, you know, not to become melodramatic uh, 
so yeah, it was it was it was definitely a challenge. Uh, but I absolutely loved working on it. But then, I mean, for me, that is the joy of this industry is is the actually getting to work with close friends on really creative projects that are close to their hearts. Um, and and I mean that project is the perfect example of that, where you had you being writer director. Myself and George and the cast who worked together and were taking classes together. Justin, I mean, I can't even remember. I mean, I think I, there was very few people, I'd say, on that set that that we didn't all have some kind of close relationship with. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just just fantastic. But so we were doing some mad Tom Kibbe exercises on set, uh, including the exercise where you make these weird noises into a mirror to, to get you in the zone. Um, what, what, how did that come across to you? Because I know we, 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 I know we forewarned you that we would be shouting into mirrors <laughs> in between takes. But I thought did you it were seem a bit mad? I never want to do it. Like, <laughs> 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 I wanted to shut the production down. Like, <laughs> uh, it was, um, I think the first time it was, well, I mean, he, I didn't. I remember hearing you guys do, do doing that, and it was going kind of, okay. I'm not sure what they're doing, but also kind of trusting the process, and you know that whatever. Like, and also you know, seeing that whatever you're doing, that when you come into the room and we start filming, that you know you're, you've you've gone to wherever you need to go, and it was working. So as I was, I wasn't. I certainly wasn't questioning it, but it did kind of, it did make me fascinated about like what okay what are they doing like you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's he building in there yeah. you know, um uh which kind of i which i think subsequently that led me on to um uh to uh asking tom if i could attend one of his classes and just see uh what, what as in pure purely as a as, as a spectator but i i said to him look i, right. I you know, I mean, I'll be happy to participate if you want, but like, I, I'm, I'm not an actor, I'm a director, but I'd like to see it. But then, and then I went to one of the classes and it was like, because if you're not familiar with it, like, and you sit and you walk in, in the middle of one of these repetition exercises, like, it's like going to Mars, like, okay. like, like I had no idea what was happening. And I was like, right. at some point, are they going to like, like do dialogue or something? Nah, nah, it's 15 minutes of like, but but then once you kind of kind of get past the astonishment of it, you see that they are actually exploring these these ranges of emotions that are coming yeah. through just repetition and and maybe slight bit of movement and approaching and and moving further away. But they are going through like a range of emotions, and it's not um, it doesn't feel like artifice. It yeah. really genuinely feels like they are going to places like and um, that may be fascinated by it also kind of terrified because i because i kind of thought okay well if i stay in this class longer i have to participate but um but also especially doing this appear with you guys because I, me- I remember when i were hurt when we rehearsed it um i i loved it i loved rehearsing with you and i and and also because it was something that i had written i i strongly felt that like i felt i had the confidence to um to be able to answer the questions that you guys had. And I remember some, I remember at some point you asked me like, what did, what did he used to do or something like, and what, what did he do before this happened? And I think I, I just said, oh, he, I think he was like a graphic designer or something. And you were like, Oh, right. Okay. And I don't know where that came from, but like, um, it right. was a huge change from in the past where, I mean, I've worked with like brilliant, brilliant writers, but you always have the option and the tendency to defer to them. You know, right. or yeah. at least because you wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't presume to, to know that without asking. I mean, what you don't want to say, oh, he's a graphic designer. And then and the writer says, well, no, obviously it's not like that's stupid, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, but um, I love the kind of the, the, the freedom and also just the kind of that, the kind of the, the, the ability to, to kind of have that story, that backstory. It's, it's in your head somewhere. If you've written the script that those answers are are already there sure and, and i so I, I uh but i also felt in in rehearsing with you that like it became more acute to me than it had and than it ever had been in the past that 
I didn't have the experience of working with actors that I would like to have. And I didn't have the language that I would have liked to speak to you with because I, I found myself, you, I saw, I, I, I found myself using words like just bigger and smaller. And, um, and I knew that like an actor needs more motivation than that. Like the deeper you can go into the mechanics of it and, and shift that gear rather than kind of like say I like just a bit louder or a bit slower or or god forbid like a line reading like you know but yeah the- interesting because I mean I don't think that was my experience uh, at the time I mean I feel like because we also had the luxury of rehearsals I feel like we did you know we did a lot of um nuanced work in terms of building up the characters and maybe that's why I didn't feel that then on the day because we had done so much background work and we had done so much prep work that um that in a way then you don't you don't need as much on the day so maybe it didn't you know it didn't come across to me that way certainly yeah, um, yeah. but, I mean, but that, so that, you you did go on to do like you're I mean you're still doing Tom Kibbe classes when they're they're available I'm still doing Tom how, Kibbe classes yeah how have you so I guess two questions how have you found it how have you found it has impacted on you as a director in terms of what you were just saying and then secondly uh will you act because we've done, we've done some great scenes together in yeah, class. We did, we did of mice and men. Yeah, uh, the the acting classes were. I mean, I think in terms of how I work with actors, there were the the acting classes were like there's a before and after there. Like really, um, I think this, um, the like when I was making those those early the early films and short films. Um, the experience you get from just setting up shots and like being aware of like a plane flying overhead so you can't record sound there or people in the background or whatever all those things are building up your your repertoire of your experience so that when you actually do get to work with like DOPs and sound recordists and such you at least have that basic kind of like knowledge of you know composition and grading or, or or whatever even though they may be leagues ahead of you but you can still communicate with them other, using that basic language and um what the classes with tom the acting classes gave to me was that same type of basic communicative ability mm-hmm. that can only be gained through experience you know Makes sense yeah um, yeah and and doing the, the the repetition exercises like and I mean, I remember do, doing stuff like we like we did the one time did like the mirror exercises or the singing exercises, and I found myself kind of just like really going to like like quite emotional places with it, yeah. And trying and and not being, but like and I mean, Tom is such a kind of fantastic teacher that he kind of he makes you feel like completely safe in it, whether you're you know like roaring your head off like or, or yeah in or sobbing like you know, but um that basic kind of familiarity of like the the pressure and the uh and the and what is necessary to act out a scene it, whether that's in front of like 10 other students or it's in front of a camera and a crew um i kind of felt that like once i had that and once i i had those and and i could and i found myself kind of at times replicating like kind of tom's um Tom's way with actors or Tom's vocabulary sometimes in the most most sure. basic things like but um but I found that the next short film I did after that which was um a, an Irish film board short called Mary that like and I was working with kids and um uh and uh, George Hanover from who's the disappears in that as well and Mark Dalton and a bunch of other great actors um but that even when we're doing the rehearsals for that it was totally different from any rehearsals that I, I did before so we right. had a private space I made absolutely sure we had props I got involved in the rehearsals. So even if, if I was doing live line readings, I was, I was moving or I was blocking with the actors, like, you know, and, right. and especially with the kids and stuff, like, you know, there was, there's a scene, like there's, there's a scene where one of the kids kind of gets pushed down to the ground. Like, so I jumped down to the ground with them, like, and I, and I was kind of saying, well, you throw your stuff around, you know, and I know that that put them at ease, like, and it put me at ease. And, sure. but it's, in the past, what I probably would have done is I would have stood off to the side and kind of maybe set up a camera and recorded it. And like, that's all good. Let's, and I'm sure it wouldn't have put the actors off. Like, but it's, 
adds a sense sure. of familiarity and and again going back to that thing of just like you're establishing that you have that basic kind of connection between like I I I mean I've I've nowhere near the amount of like experience that any of you guys do but I have a fundamental understanding of what the process is on a basic level and and I think that that becomes palpable in the in the rehearsal space yeah that makes a lot of sense it makes a lot of sense and I think a lot of the time there is there's too much of um there's too much of a divide between the director and the actor and nobody even really understands what that divide is exactly um and and also there's too much of a kind of a there's too much of a mystique built up around like acting in adverted commas as well um so i think um yeah I, i can only imagine that it must be really valuable as a director to to actually attend a class and 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 actually experience it yeah yeah and 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 terrifying at the beginning well yeah really yeah terrifying for an actor as well at the beginning of course of course yeah yeah yeah. but like i mean i i it it kind of blows my mind that like more directors don't do it though you know um because and especially when it kind of like the like there are acting classes pretty much everywhere like in every certainly in every major city like you know sure yeah the option of it's like it's like as a director if you had the option of like doing a doing a course on on cinematography with a bunch of other cinematographers like i mean of course you would do it like you know um but i think there is probably a, that there is that barrier of like the that of y- you kind of have to maybe kind of bare your soul a little bit like or you you know sure that 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 thing of like of, of ag- acting out a scene and like like forgetting your lines or like busting out laughing or something or you know or the that emotion comes up that some emotion comes up that you weren't expecting and it's really it's really raw like but um but once you are through it and on the other side it's um it it is it's it's so fantastic for your for your confidence sure in dealing with actors and 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 also i think on the set as well it it made me kind of because in the past I I had like done all the technical stuff myself, I had to kind of like extract myself from that mode of thinking over the over all the music videos and short films I did, which was like okay no I okay I I don't have the camera so I'm not going to shoot I'm not going to film it right but even at that I'd be kind of checking the shots and stuff I mean there's nothing wrong with that like but sure yeah. uh, but it is it has moved me much more into the uh, into the sphere and the belief that like the director's primary role is to work with the actors the other stuff the other stuff i mean you need to be deeply involved in but for the most part that should be prepared beforehand and also with rehearsals that should all be done beforehand as well but like your primary job as a director when you're working with actors on on the day is to like is to work with them answer their questions make them feel comfortable not like nudge whatever needs to be nudged um and create uh um a fun, comfortable, enjoyable set, even on a on a heavy drama, you know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for listening, and please do check out part two, where we'll be chatting about Sean's latest Oscar qualifying short, how he finds actors for his projects, and his opinions on what's most important when networking. If you'd like to know more about Sean, go to www.seanoconnor.com. That's S-H-A-U-N-O-C-O-N-N-O-R.com. And if you're looking for a quick, easy and affordable professional actors website, check out www.mysite.actor. Thanks for listening.